Hi everyone, how are you? This blustery, blustery day. Um, so I am using this uh, Friday Facebook Live to chat a wee bit more about the Sugar Free Challenge that I have run on starting on Monday. That's Monday the 15th of November, that's this Monday. And um, I've had a, f a few questions over the last over the last week or so that I've kind of answered individually, but um, a few of them keep coming up time and time again. So I thought I would just do a wee uh, Q&A. But equally, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comment, comments now and I'll, I'll, I'll try to deal with them as we go along. Those comments will, will normally pop up on the screen in front of me. So the Sugar Free Challenge that is starting, um, a few people kind of had thought that it was something that you had to be there at a particular time, you know, like a program that you had to be there on a Monday night or that it was every morning at 9 a.m. Or, or something like that. And it's not like that at all. It's a very much do it at your own pace, self-paced challenge that is hosted in a private Facebook group with loads of resources, daily tips, you know, motivation. Um, there'll be live Q&A opportunities, something similar to this one. Um, but you can always just, you know, watch those on playback. Um, loads of recipes and support but all within the framework of a Facebook group so you can kind of dip in and out. You don't have to commit to a time or a place. The commitment that you're making is to the two week period uh, and more about that later as well. So you don't have to commit to being in a particular place at a particular time. You check into the group whenever it suits you and even for those live video sessions they're always there to play back um, you know, so that you can have the benefit of, of that um, shared expertise. The other thing that I just wanted to make clear with everyone is we're not talking about a sugar-free life forever and ever, I mean, right? I don't advocate long-term dietary exclusion of any food unless for medical reasons. But a reset of anything that starts to control you or can have a negative impact on your health or on your life can be very useful so that you can kind of it, it's a bit like having having a wee holiday right it allows us to restore back to factory settings anybody who has an iphone or who has ever done anything like that on a computer basically knows that what you're doing is you're clearing it back to the day that that thing left the factory all brand new with none of the stored up kind of like you know rubbish that's that's floating around on all of our computer or or phone drives so something like this two week sugar free challenge allows you to reset back the factory settings take us back to new i kind of liken it a wee bit to the very trendy uh, social media detoxes that we hear the the social media media influencers talking about. So this is this is just like a wee bit of a detox like that, and and with anything like that, with that social media detox, with us doing the sugar free challenge, the first few days might be a wee bit challenging, but the benefits very much are worth the discomfort. I can guarantee that. Now, here's some of the questions that I've been asked. Can I eat fruit on the sugar-free challenge? Yes, you can. Fruit is super nutritious, loaded with loads of vitamins and antioxidants. And I have some uh, fantastic recipes that I'll be sharing in the sugar-free challenge group using frozen bananas, with apples and with berries. Now, I do suggest limiting your fruit intake to two pieces a day. And that's not just for the sugar-free challenge with most of my dietary protocols with clients. We'd be looking at, at that sort of thing because it can be so easy to replace one sweetness addiction with another. And much of our fruit is very sweet. Um, now I do cover this much, much more um, over the course of, of the two weeks uh, as well. But yes, you can have fruit, um, just limiting it there, around about two pieces a day. And as I say, lots of my recipes for desserts and snacks and things like that. On the sugar-free challenge, I use fruit. 
Another question that I'm um, asked quite a lot is, oh, 14 days is very long and do you have to complete the full 14 days? Maybe somebody's going away for like a weekend at the beginning or at the end. And I say, absolutely not. This is a very personal challenge. And I cover that in the success manual that you get on registration for the challenge. I'm there to support you, do whatever you can do. Some people may decide that five days or one week is plenty. And I suggest that, that everybody sets themselves a time frame that you think will be challenging. Challenging enough, but not off-putting. And then see how you feel, you know, after say the five days or the one week or something like that. So don't let the 14 days scare you. And actually in the group this morning I was talking, uh, even though it hasn't started yet, I've kind of just put up a couple of posts for any of the early birds that are in there getting themselves prepared. And I was talking just about the fact that sometimes people just can use the Monday or the Tuesday to get themselves kind of organised and, and in the groove and then start 100% from the Wednesday. So it, it just depends. Another question that I'm asked, can I still have honey or maple syrup or agave nectar, things like that? Those are all sweeteners, more natural sweeteners, but still kind of like a sweetener type thing. And again, I covered this in that success manual that you get. It's kind of like the, the sugar-free challenge success manual that I have drafted. Um, and so I cover that in the success manual. But the short answer is I suggest not at least initially, because what we're trying to do is to reset your taste buds and do a wee bit of brain rewiring in terms of the messages received and sent out about sweetness. However, here's the thing. If you are a big consumer of sugar and refined carbohydrates at the minute, and, the, and you feel that having a wee drizzle of, of um, honey on your porridge, say in the morning, will help you, then set that as your challenge. 14 days sugar-free, but with a drizzle of honey on my porridge every day. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so think about how you're going to feel at the end of those 14 days. You know, you're not going to focus on the fact that you had a wee drizzle of honey here or there. You know, that's not going to do the damage. It's it's the benefits from all of the others. So again, it's a bit like, um, the, you know, the length of the challenge or anything around that. You can kind of like set your own challenge parameters, but definitely make it a wee bit of a challenge. What about artificial sweeteners? Now, I am not a big fan of artificial sweeteners at all. There are a few that are slightly better than others and that don't impact blood sugars as much, and they're not as artificial, so to speak. Um, but they do all send a confusing message to the brain, you know, basically saying here's sweetness, but no calories, and the brain's waiting on calories and things like that. I do cover this a lot more in the success manual, and I talk about it, um, you know, midway through, through the challenge. It's a very similar answer, though, to the one about honey. Um, you know, it depends what's going to help you um, progress through the 14 days and what the challenge is. So we sprinkle in a healthier um, sweetener and I have those listed in the success manual as well. Um, you know, won't, won't just negate uh, the work that you're doing on the challenge. The next thing is something that people are often worried about whenever, they, whenever they're starting a challenge. Are there any side effects to giving up sugar? Now, this really does depend on your level of consumption at starting the challenge. For a high you know, sugar refined carbs user, if you're you know, eating a lot of say, bread products that have sugar added, like pancakes, um, some white bread, even some brown bread, um and you know scones and then you you know there would be like sweets or sugary cereals things like that um and maybe sugary drinks anything like that you could experience a, a bit of a headache and some irritability and cravings in your first few days the higher the the higher the amount of your consumption you know the more you're going to have that headache that irritability and that craving in the first few days there are some supplements that you can take to help with this and I have this advice already preloaded into the Facebook group waiting for you as soon as you hit there. 
but also I suggest that if you think that you're in this bracket, use the first few days to ease your way and they start to reduce your intake, first of all. And once you're registered, pop me a wee message and, and I can give you a wee bit of a, a wee bit more advice on that, um, you know, if you are worried about uh, about the side effects. But the thing is, these effects pass very quickly and are replaced with amazing benefits, okay? So what are those benefits? What benefits will I feel? Um, was, I was asked by a few people actually, right? And I would just say, oh gosh, where do I, where do I start? Um, you know, I've done this quite a few times, the, the two week sugar-free challenge, I've also gone six weeks um, uh, as part of a, a gut health program that I run. Um, and you do feel amazing. You feel so good that it's a wonder that we kind of go back to, um, to eating the stuff again. But a lot of that is, is not our fault. It's food manufacturer's fault. But anyway, I'll not get into that. So where do I start? Here are some comments from previous participants on my 14-day uh, sugar-free challenge. They feel amazing. More energy. Who doesn't want more energy? Sleeping better. I definitely find I sleep better. Balanced mood. Fantastic. No cravings. So after the initial side effect of maybe having some cravings, that starts to die down, especially then whenever you're following a more healthy eating regime with more protein and some healthy fats and things like that. Um, better memory, so better cognitive function. You just feel more in control of your diet rather than your diet being in control of you. Um, so you're thinking more clearly. None of the roller coaster that uh, you know that that we sometimes affect or, or feel, you know the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, especially that mid afternoon dip. Um, uh, a lot of people, if they have weight to lose, have lost weight um, in in just the two weeks. Uh, better skin, and actually one lady noticed uh, a difference in her. Um, in her eyesight, she felt that she could see more clearly. Now that's not the first time I've heard that. I have seen some research about the effect that sugar has um, on the on the clarity of your of your eyesight. So that was a, a very interesting um, comment. I think it was just in, in the last challenge that I did in, in June. So those are all just some of the self-reported benefits from some previous participants. And then coming to a really important question, and one that I probably should have put at the top because everybody wants to know about this. What about alcohol? Whenever you're on the sugar-free challenge, are you allowed alcohol? So this is asked every time. That uh, I have it in my frequently asked questions on the website. And the answer is, and we even have a drum roll here, it's entirely up to you, right? Now, if I was being a puritanical 100% or nothing, right, kind of challenge host, I'd say absolutely no alcohol. But it's all about what is a challenge to you uh, whenever you're doing this challenge, okay? You wanna make it significant. If giving up sugar in your daily, you know, in your in your daily food and snacks is going to be a significant challenge for you, and having to give up your one or two glasses of red wine at the weekend, maybe that's a step too far, then I say have the glass of wine. But on the other hand, maybe it would be an interesting experiment. Do not have the red wine at the weekend and see how it goes. Right? Remember, this is only for two weeks. And it is a challenge. So it's going to be up to you. And I did ask the question this morning, really, for anybody coming onto the Facebook group to say, okay, guys, you know, what do you think? What are you going to do? Um, I, I do have a list of what to avoid and what to stock up on in terms of doing the challenge. And alcohol is on the avoid list. But as I say, it's all relative and it all depends on you. And the other thing is, somebody had asked one time, oh my gosh, I've got a wedding, you know, right in the middle of the 14 days. Um, you know, and I want to go and have a glass of champagne or a glass of wine or gin and tonic or whatever else. I say, go for it. Do you know what I mean? If out of those 14 days, you're sugar free for 13 of them and that one day you've gone and enjoyed your wedding, then that's a win-win. 
Do you know what I mean? That's that's brilliant. Uh, and another question that is that is asked sometimes is, do I provide recipes for meals and snacks and things like that? And yes, there are loads and loads and loads of uh, snack recipes. You hear me talking about the dessert ones, but also I will be giving you some recipes for your main meals. You know, for your lunches, for dinners, and for breakfasts and recommendations around that because what we eat for our main meals can help determine whether or not we're going to have these, you know, crazy cravings um, for things. So, you know, you kind of get the, the, the whole package um, there with it. So I hope that answered a few of your questions and just giving you some idea about what it's going to be like um, in, the, in the group. And if you are interested um, in joining us, um, if you have any other questions, just pop me a wee message. But if you are interested, just use the link, uh, follow the link there. It's £25 for the two weeks and you're getting daily support both from me and from the other uh, members of the group. So it would be great to have a few of you there. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now.